Hi, this video is going to follow the multiple linear regression example that's in the weekly discussion board. This one covers crime and trying to model crime in one year based on crime in previous years. So I'm assuming that you've done the reading and now I'm going to show you how to do the analysis in StatCrunch. So multiple linear regression and the, the menu trail is going to be stat, regression, multiple linear. Uh, last week it wasn't multiple linear, it was simple linear. This week it's going to be multiple linear. So let's go ahead and bring in StatCrunch. Click on StatCrunch. Make sure your Java is updated. Data sets from your textbook, that's the easiest way to get to it, even though we are going to be using an external data set, one that is on the internet. So to get it in there, web address. So it's load a data set from a web address the www address is given to you in the example. First line does include column names so keep this checked. The delimiter is going to be commas because this is a comma separated variable file. No need to share with anyone. The rest are optional. I'll go ahead and hit load file here at the bottom. Now it's searching for it. Let's bring it in and voila there it is and voila there it is and voila there it is. One of these times that's going to work. It's going to be here pretty soon. Maybe I have a slow internet connection. Maybe I'm talking too fast. Maybe I'm going to have to hit pause on this recording until it gets in there. Voila! There's the data. We're going to be paying attention to just three variables. The violent crime rate in 1990, which is the crime 90 the property crime rate in 1990, which is P crime 90, and we're going to use those two variables to predict the violent crime rate in 2000, V crime 00. Notice we got the states here, not important, codes, etc., but it's these three variables, V crime 90, P crime 90 is the independent variables, and V crime 00 as the dependent variable. So let's go ahead and inter uh, let's, let's, uh, analyze the interaction model, stat, mm, regression, multiple linear. And it's multiple linear because we have multiple independent variables and because it's linear. This window pops up. Y variable is going to be V crime 0, 0. There's going to be two X variables, V crime 90 and P crime 90, and I'm just clicking on those. And there's going to be an interaction. That interaction is going to be between V crime 90 and P crime 90. So I clicked those two and I'm going to hit add. And we're done. And calculate. This is the interaction model. So the only thing that we are paying attention to, or the first thing we're paying attention to, is the p value on that interaction term. And this is the interaction term. It's the product of that violent crime rate 90 and the property crime rate 90. The p-value for that is greater than alpha. The p-value is 0 0.5039. Alpha is 0 0.05. Because the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that that interaction term is important. Since it's not important, we can get rid of it. And we should get rid of it. We want simpler models. When all is said and done, a simpler model tends to be the better model because this interaction term is not statistically significant, that means that it doesn't really matter in predicting the violent crime rate in 2000. So we get rid of that. Getting rid of it means that we're getting rid of the only interaction term, which means we are no longer running an interaction model. We're running what's called a additive model. And it's called the additive model because we're just adding two terms. We're not interacting them with that multiplying. So close this stat regression multiple linear we're going to do a additive model or the first of our two additive models y variable again is going to be v crime 0 0 the x variables will again be v crime 90 and p crime 90 there will be no interactions and calculate here we are notice here this is our regression table we'll look over here at the p values again we notice that V crime 90 is statistically significant because the p value is less than alpha, so we have to keep it. 
We also notice that the property crime rate in 1990 is not statistically significant. Its p-value is 0.9031, which is greater than alpha. Since it is not statistically, since it is not sti statistically significant, uh, we're going to get rid of it. Again, because simpler models are better. And because p-value is greater than alpha, we're saying that p-crime 90 does not significantly influence the violent crime rate in 2000 when controlling the violent crime rate in 1990. So we're going to get rid of this p-crime 90 variable. Stat, regression. Since we've only got one independent variable, simple linear regression. The x variable is v crime 90. The y variable is v crime 00. And we're going to calculate. And here's our regression table. There's our estimated regression equation. Our r squared value is 0.8769744. The correlation coefficient, which is r, is 0.9365. The estimate of standard error, standard deviation, is, is 85.5474. We notice that the slope is statistically significant. So this is going to be our final model. And it's a simple linear regression model, unfortunately. But life does not always give us what we want. The slope is 0 0.8506503. That means this is the effect of the violent crime rate in 1990 on the violent crime rate in 2000. So for every one increase in the violent crime rate in 1990, the violent crime rate in 2000 will go up by about 0.58. Not a lot, but it's kind of interesting. The slope of the violent crime rate in, in, in 2000 is, is shallower than uh, 45 degrees. It's another way of looking at it. Now we can do some predictions. I'll go ahead and close this. Uh, stat, regression, simple linear. Again, the x variable is v crime 90. The y variable is v crime 00. Let's hit next now instead of calculate. Now we got some hypothesis tests we could run. We could do a confidence interval if we wished. We'll leave it at hypothesis test. Next. Options. Click this first one. We want to predict y, which is the violent crime rate in 2000, for x equal to 200, which was the example given in section 4.4. And calculate. Here's what pops up. Again, the regression table, which we've seen. Again, the ANOVA table, which we've seen. Predicted value. When x is 200, that is, when the violent crime rate in 1990 is 200, we predict the violent crime rate in 2000 as 225.65723. We have a 95% confidence interval for that of 192 to 259, and a 95% prediction interval uh, from 50 to 400. Prediction intervals are always wider than the confidence intervals because the confidence interval is for the mean or for the expected value. The prediction interval is for a new observation. In other words, if I want to say, OK, I've got this state. Its violent crime rate in 1990 was 200. Give me a 95% confidence interval or a prediction interval for the violent crime rate in 2000 for that state. That would be from 50 to 400. If I say, what is the violent crime rate, give me a confidence interval for the violent crime rate for the expected, let me start that sentence again. I want a 95% confidence interval for the expected violent crime rate in 2000, then I'd give the 95% confidence interval. So expected means confidence interval. For a new observation or for, for an individual state, it'll be for a uh, prediction interval, PI. One last thing I want to show you, we're, we're kind of done with the example that's written down, but we really do need to look at some residuals. So stat, regression, simple linear. Actually, let's do multiple linear. Let's break some rules here. Y variable would be v crime 0, 0. v crime 90 will be the x variable. Next, variable selection won't need to do. Save options. Let's save the residuals, student I residuals. Mm, those look good.
Cook's distance should be fun. And I'll calculate. So you got three things we're saving. Multiple linear regression, regression table, analysis variance table. Now at the bottom it tells us the residuals are stored in residuals, studentized residuals are stored in stud resid, and Cook's distance in Cook's D. So let's close this, scroll to the right, we see that we've got three new columns. The residuals, the studentized residuals, which is kind of a standardized residuals, and Cook's distance, which measures influence. So if we want to look at residuals now, we can look at summary statistics for a column. Which column? We'll look at residuals. Calculate. So here's the summary statistics for the residuals. The expected value or the mean is zero as we expected. There's a standard deviation of 84.68. We've seen that number before. Uh, the median residual, the range, the minimum, the maximum, the first and the third quartile, and we could have gotten other measures. Studentized residuals are interesting. Summary stats, columns. Studentized residuals are interesting because their distribution is approximately normal. mean again is close to zero, but studentized residuals will not have to have a zero mean. Variance is close to one. Notice that this is approximately a normal zero one distribution. Median, so we do see that it is slightly negative, cor uh, negative skew to it. The minimum, the maximum, the, the cutoff on 95% uh, significance is 1.96, recall. Um, there's, there's some outliers here, or appears to be outliers. We could look at the graphics to get a better uh, look at it. Histogram, and then again, histogram pops up, studentized residuals, create the graph. Now that should look normal, or really close to normal if this is an appropriate model. Uh, notice that really big spike here, and it does seem to be slightly uh, skewed to the left or to the right, I can't tell which. Um, not too badly skewed, but it seems slightly skewed. And you're looking to see that this looks normal, and I'm not seeing the normal bell-shaped curve here. It looks very pointy, so I'm, I'm thinking that this model may not be an appropriate model. We may have to do some, uh, some additional changes to the independent variable, which will be beyond the scope of this course. Let's also look at the Cook's distance. Let me go back to the residuals. I uh, do a residual plot. Residual plot, the residual is the y-axis, and the x-axis is the uh, bank crime rate in 2000. And what we're looking here is for a scatter, uh, just a, like a, a shotgun blast. And it looks pretty good. There's this one that's way out there, but this is an outlier. This is Washington, D.C. But otherwise, it looks more or less shotgun blast. This one down here looks a little odd, but I can live with that. And that's really all that we need to cover in this in this chapter. Um, I showed you how to get the residuals, the studentized residuals, the Cook's D distance. Um, showed you how to do the multiple regression. Showed you how to do some other fun stuff. Um, but basically, that's the end of this, this chapter. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know one way or the other, and we can discuss this on the discussion boards. Thank you.